You don't need that. You don't need these. You don't need that. But you will need these. I'm so happy that you found this video and chose to click on it because if you are just starting out with growing orchids or getting back into growing orchids but it has been a while since you had a collection, well in this video I'm going to give you my tips and tricks on how to start growing orchids without getting overwhelmed. I will pinpoint the cheapest way of going about it so that you won't get caught up in the costly aspect of the hobby that could possibly compromise your growing collection and your enthusiasm for this wonderful hobby. Basically I will cover things that I wish if I had had a crystal ball I would have loved to have known before starting with this collection which is my third in as many decades. Once again, I'm so glad that you're here. It's always nice to have someone come to the orchid growing hobby full of excitement and enthusiasm, brimming with questions. So let me get one thing out of the way. I don't have many rules on my community guidelines section, but there is one that I have never actually put into writing and maybe I should, but the unwritten rule is don't be shy, aka there is no such thing as a dumb question. Ask away to your heart's content, then if the answers provided prompt one more question, two more questions, keep asking. You have come to the right channel when it comes to asking questions and getting answers. Test me, <laughs> challenge what I'm saying and see if you can exhaust my reply tank. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome to the hobby. Let me give you some pointers to make your journey as rewarding as possible. First of all, do not buy orchids that will not do well in the space or outdoors that you plan to reserve for your orchids. I am specifically talking about the right now, without any additional equipment. What are your temperatures during the summers? Those are your highs. And what are your temperatures during the winter months? Those are your lows. That includes outdoors. Indoors, many households heat during the winter and many have to cool their homes during the summer. So to get an understanding of your temperature range is the one factor that is going to be your guide as to what is going to grow well in your space. If you have space outdoors, then do the same thing. Confirm your temperatures in the great outdoors as well because there are many orchids that will do well for your climate that can stay outside all year round, including if your temperatures dip below 10 degrees Celsius. This will allow for more space indoors, but we don't want to encourage going overboard just yet. Let me finish what I'm telling you and then you will understand where I'm coming from. Now also though, keep a mental note or write the details down for future reference, but as you go around establishing what temperature ranges you're dealing with, look at the light influences in the different areas you are considering would work well to grow orchids. We're not even discussing a separate room. I really want to encourage everyone that is starting out or getting back to growing orchids to see their space for what it is and where orchids can grow. Not everyone has the luxury of a separate designated room to close the door on and have as a grow room exclusively. So keep light levels in mind. And while you do that, if you are in a hemisphere that has the four seasons, remind yourself how the sun is positioned in the sky during the different seasons. This way you can narrow down where you are going to be able to place orchids that call for high light. If growing outdoors is not an option, even during the warmer months of the year, at least you know how your light levels will fluctuate throughout the months of the different seasons. Also, stay aware that light levels in one room may be higher during a time of year during which the next room may have higher light levels throughout another time of year. The theory behind getting this part of your space's intel is to guide you when it comes to purchasing your orchids. As you go about browsing the different sites, have your temperature ranges in mind as well as the different light influences and select your orchids accordingly. Also, at no point do you need to think of supplemental light or heating expenses. Approach this phase along the principle of I have what I have, so what do I have and how can I make it work with the way things are right now. If you have put a budget aside for your new hobby, focus on what you need for your hobby. Based on what you naturally have available to you, supplemental lights and heating etc. should be way down in your list of priorities. I know 
that it is easy to get carried away with shelving, heat mats, supplemental lights, fans, possible heaters, humidifiers, but trust me, earlier on I said that I wish I had had this kind of a video before going gung-ho and getting this collection, because I would have saved a lot of headache and heartache and money as well, just by not buying things that I would not be able to afford to use at a later stage. There are many orchids that will grow without any additional supplementation of anything. And yes, without some specific equipment, there will be many orchids that you will not be able to grow either. However, the relaxed way of growing orchids combined with the best success and maximum joy because of results is to focus on what you can grow without any added equipment. One thing you do really need to look into, it's possible you need to set something aside in your budget for that. You need to take into consideration you have to have 24-7, 365 days, 366 days on a leap year, your orchids need access to the cleanest water with the lowest parts per million, be it out of the faucet or if your municipal water is not up to standard, then your budget will require some form of filtration system that needs to be installed to ensure your orchids get the cleanest water. Without clean water, orchids will not do well. Your budget in this instance should also include a TDS meter as well as a pH meter. These gadgets will give you eyes as to what you are watering your orchids with. Any water that has a ppm above 100 is not suitable for orchids unless you are using that water to flush your pots. You see, to have a baseline of pure water with 100 parts per million for us as humans may be just fine as drinking water, that 100 parts per million is far too high because we have not even added fertilizer yet. So you see, there are priorities that need to be ascertained and lighting or heating does not factor in at this point in time based on your previous notes that you have taken. I do have a reverse osmosis system because I have no other choice, but trust me, if my municipal water came out lower than 100 parts per million, I would not need to budget for that piece of equipment, which carries long-term costs with it because filters will need regular changing. So save your wallet and check your water quality first by investing in a TDS and pH meter, and then you can still make the calculated decision if you need to invest in a reverse osmosis water filtration unit. Now this is where I am personally biased, but I hear me out with my next recommendation. Unless you're going to grow your new collection outdoors in the landscape attached to trees or mounted all around because your temperatures allow for that, as well as your humidity being nice and high, please really think about the choice of media you are going to use moving forward. Do not make the same mistake I did, thinking that nothing is ever going to change. One thing being the finances at present day being the way they are and assuming that they're going to stay that way. And based on that, you may think you have covered worst case scenario. Well, when it comes to the choice of media, really consider this as a long-term commitment because my worst case scenario was covered, or so I thought but no one could predict the pandemic. Consider the rising cost of everything. Consider this and think five years, eight years, and 10 years ahead. As an example, think about how you are able to afford things now, but is it sustainable for your wallet in five years? Keep in mind your orchid collection may grow, so you will be inclined to purchase more media. I can assure you that if I had been growing my orchids in organic media when the pandemic hit, there there is no way I would have been able to afford repotting the 20 orchids that needed repotting in 2020. To this day, I'm truly grateful for my inorganic media growing decision because I can recycle it. While the initial investment was perhaps a little higher than organic media at the time, that investment has easily been balanced out and has proven the cheapest option in the past five years. Growing orchids is a long-term investment. Organic media prices are already much higher at the time of filming compared to what they were for me back in 2018 when the majority of this collection arrived. Yes, I would be paying more for a bag of Lekka in 2024 than I did in 
2018, but I still have my 2018 LECA because everything is being recycled. However, look at present day. Inorganic media is by no means more expensive than organic media already is now. And then consider the report schedule of your orchids. What will they need? I cannot emphasize enough the cost factor of having to report orchids every year every two years or every three years. The organic media cost is going to swallow up a huge chunk of your budget and I encourage you to consider the culture you want to grow your orchids in very, very carefully and know what you may be up against and can you sustain that for many, many years to come without losing heart and feeling as though your orchids are starting to prove a financial burden. You see, a very important part of your budget consideration will also be your choice of fertilizer and supplements. You will see many, many recommendations and what other growers suggest you use because they have done so successfully for many years and this can quickly become overwhelming. So please do not let all that information overwhelm you, but know that any product with any reference to orchids slapped on the label automatically costs a lot more. You know, because <laughs> anyone growing orchids is automatically considered wealthy, right? <clears throat> Wrong. There are many ways to fertilize and supplement orchids that do not need to cost an arm and a leg. If you're at the beginning stages of not knowing what is sufficient and not expensive, remember at the beginning of this video I mentioned an unwritten rule? Ask. I will be able to help you out with that. I will also be able to help you out with whatever you may consider ideal for orchids, indoors, outdoors, etc. I have grown orchids in the tropics, in organic media, in inorganic media. I have made so many mistakes that I have lost orchids in all of these environments and setups. I bit off more than I could chew and hindsight is 2020. but I can assure you that based on what I know now, after this collection, I can guide you through your new hobby or the revival of a hobby you want to pick up again either by helping with things you do not know or just confirm what you already know but are not 100% sure about for the time being and you would like to bounce ideas around. Now that we have that part out of the way, let's get to the fun part and that is deciding which orchids we want. Make a list of orchids that you really want and look up their care and see if they would do well with what you have established as your grow conditions as things are right now. If you find that you have so many orchids that would do well in your space or spaces, then be careful about getting them all at once. Whittle the list down to your must-haves right out of the gate, the ones that you really can't do without, and keep the rest of the list for future reference. As you establish your space or spaces, you want to avoid overcrowding. Remember, again, we are working with what is the now. No purchasing shelves, no purchasing lights, we're not purchasing humidifiers, etc. And remember that orchids will grow and the space will fill up relatively quickly. Of course, if you can get a separate room for your new collection or if you're going to clear out a sunroom, then your options for getting everything on your list of orchids are much higher, but take it easy so as not to get overwhelmed. And again, stay away from artificial lighting. The tips I'm providing here are based on what what you see right now without any kit and caboodle and remember this is not a sprint growing orchids is a marathon I would also love to advise you about which nurseries are more trustworthy than others, but we are on a global platform, so I'm just going to add this recommendation. If you are in a lucky position and you can visit orchid nurseries locally, then please take advantage of that. Picking your orchids out yourself is a luxury that many growers do not have. If you rely on shipped orchids, then you're welcome to ask me when it comes to US nurseries and European nurseries. I'm not able to speak on any other parts of the world, but if you ask the question, in the comments. I'm going to find out by passing the question around in order to get you an answer and maybe somebody will see your comment and answer directly as well if they happen to live in that country or that part of the world. Now, if all the other pointers were pretty self-explanatory, I appreciate that you've made it to this part of the video and that you stuck around anyway. Allow me to add this one more recommendation. Please stay away from any videos that promise miracle results by using some kind of ingredient that is being shown on thumbnails. There are so many fake orchid hack care videos floating around on YouTube. They are not a credible source of information whatsoever. 
even though many times we may get desperate and think this is going to help my orchid, I need a quick fix now, 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 now. Please do not fall for these fake orchid care videos. Instead, I implore you to rely on advice from growers that can show you that the orchids are reblooming year after year or being rescued and show you how long it takes. And the real test of credibility of a grower showing you something about an orchid declining is if that grower tells you why it declined, what they did wrong and why they failed to do anything about it and takes that a step further even to admit to how having made a mistake or mistakes. There is no quick fix in the orchid growing hobby, unfortunately. Remember this hobby is a marathon, not a sprint. Save yourself the time by not clicking on those videos. I have just added some example thumbnails for you to get an idea as to what they look like. I will also link a video on this subject in the description where I discuss this topic in greater detail after researching the tactics applied by those that run the channels for more than 13 months. Trust me, it was super frustrating, but what I put into that video at the end of the day, I hope it will be of help so that you don't ever go down that path with clickbait miracle promising orchid care fake hack videos. Now, having said all that, these are the pointers that I would have loved to have had someone tell me back in 2018. And remember, I already had two collections under my belt before starting this third collection. So it's not as if I was new to growing orchids and still I made mistakes that I regret to this day. I was, however, super lucky to have gone with inorganic media culture, but really lucked out when going all in on the kitten caboodle that I invested in, which now merely serves as decoration because I cannot use it. I have a lot of money invested in Kitten Caboodle, which, well, if a video like this would have been out back then, it would have made me stop and think about do I really need all that or do I buy it because I want it and never mind the advice, never mind the risk of losing orchids that will not do well in my climate, etc, etc. Hindsight is 2020. I hope that my mistakes will give you something to think about and that they will result in you making all the right calls when it comes to you purchasing the right orchids for your environment without any additional investment with the exception of clean water if you need it and then that your orchid growing journey gets off to a fabulous start. The most exciting part throughout this for me is you're either starting to grow orchids and want to find a structure that works for you or you're getting back to growing orchids and want a quick guide to get your new collection established without the headaches. The fact that you are here, well, I'm going to sound my own trumpet. You have come to the right channel and with that, Congratulations on being an orchid grower. <laughs> Please take a moment to like the video, consider sharing it, and if you have not subscribed, I would appreciate it very much if you would subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, and thank you for watching. Wishing you a wonderful day, but that condition remains that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.